Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be talking about Race Studio 3 analysis. Now the software went into production a couple of weeks ago and this video is part of a tutorial series where we're looking at some of the form and function and features of the new software now it's out for everyone to be able to use. Now we're moving into an area um, called channel reports in this particular tutorial and we're transitioning from uh, using GPS data that we've had from an AIM Solo 2 and moving into using some more of the advanced channels that you're able to uh, sort of record and log in some of the more advanced data loggers and dashes that are available from AIM. So if we transition to Race Studio 3, I've closed all of the other tabs that I had open. I still have the Silverstone National file open, but I've actually opened one up that has been recorded using an Evo 4S with a series of channels instead of using just the AIM Solo 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll across here until I find the button that says um, Channels Report, and I'm going to click. And this is going to open up the channels report. Now, there's not much available in this particular channels report so far, but before we get going, continuing that discipline of user profiles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to click Save Profile As, and I'm going to put here, I'm going to do AIM Dem um, Channels Report uh, Profile. Call it anything you like, but I'm just going to call it that for the purposes of demonstration today. We notice up here that the uh, channels report uh, profile name has appeared in this tab now. So that's the user profile that we're in. And we're going to start adding. Now, this is the default view that you oftentimes see with a channel report if you haven't set it up yet. You'll just get the distance that you've run in feet and the time that you've run in terms of lap times. And so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to go in and start looking at some aspects of using the channels report for a purpose. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I like focusing on the reasons why you download data uh, and what you want to have a look at for. And you can use the channels report for all sorts of things. You can use it for driver performance and all sorts of things like that. But today we're going to use it for vehicle health because I use the channels report more than anything else to be able to understand how the car is running using the sensors, which I'm able to log engine and car performance uh, on track. And so I'm going to show you how I'm going to set that up. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start adding some channels to the channels report. So this is the view that you typically see and you get a series of options that are available to you, but some will become more useful once you've added in some data. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus sign here. And this is going to give us a search box of all of the different types of options available to us that are being logged. And as you can see from this particular logger, we're getting all sorts of additional information. We're getting not only the GPS that we saw from the AIM Solo 2, but we're getting information that's coming in here, such as RPMs, oil pressure, we've got um, steering angle, we've got uh, throttle position, water temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, all sorts of stuff to be able to work with. Quite exciting, really, if you've got all this data to be able to work with. So we want to start adding some stuff in. Now, you can do this in order or you can resort this afterwards. It depends on what kind of flow you want to be able to use. And so I'm going to add a few channels here to demonstrate how it works. But then I'll also give you a quick sort of overview of what a channels report could look like um, if you had it fully set up for vehicle health later on. And so I'm going to add three or so channels just to be able to demonstrate what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add RPMs because I want to be able to see how I was doing with the RPMs if I had any over revs in that particular session file. Um, one of the scenarios that I've just had most recently is I have an over rev, so I asked um, for a, a compression test on the engine to make sure I hadn't done any damage before we went out for the next session or we go out for the next um, particular event. And so to be able to do that, I click on RPM and I click on max here. This is going to give me the max RPM per each of the laps. I'm going to click on OK. And looking at it, things are okay. This one's a little high, but everything's okay. Uh, not too bad. So max RPM I've put in there. Next thing I want to be able to see is water temperature. I want to see if the engine's getting too hot um, uh, throughout the session. And so um, I can go in here and I can just put in temp because this will give me a shorter um, uh, window to, a well, shorter window, a shorter list, I should say, within the window to be able to find the water temperature sensor. So I'm going to click on water temperature. And in this instance, I may want to be able to see the maximum water temperature. I also want to see what it's running at in terms of average uh, as well. So I'm going to click on uh, OK. And I'm going to see that my water temperatures, yeah, they're actually quite low. And it was absolutely freezing the day we uh, logged this session. If you're wondering if it was cold, go back up here, open up the file that we're in, click on the weather forecast, 
and see what the temperature was at the time of the particular session, it was 3.2 degrees centigrade. So it was pretty cold that day. And so useful to have that ambient temperature available to you to be able to understand why the engine was running cold. Again, just a nice advantage of the Race Studio 3 analysis software. So um, we're gonna add a couple more just to be able to use for demonstration purposes. We're gonna click in here, and the next thing we're gonna add is something to do with oil. So if I click on oil, I have a few options that are available here. I'm not gonna get into the status variables and things that I've set up here with the trigger that's on here. I'm just gonna demonstrate uh, oil pressure because if you're running an older car like I run, you wanna be able to make sure your, in fact, I think this applies to any car, you wanna make sure that your oil pressure is working okay. So in this instance, the oil pressure, we wanna see the minimum and I'm gonna put in average. And you can see that I can start adding information to be able to see how each of these particular components is running throughout this particular experience, which is there. Back up to the uh, sort of the experience here and clicking save profile so it remembers what I've set up. And now I can start looking at this information with a slightly different view and a different understanding. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I can start playing with this data to be able to see it in different types of format. For example, I can click on any of these particular areas and it will show me graphically what the performance is. And I can change these if I want to. This is lap number. Uh, and um, engine temperature. So you can see that uh, obviously sitting on grid may have sat there for a little while, then start moving. And then as the car starts running, I can see a nice graphical representation of that. I can actually color code it if I want to, to be able to see red comes down to green, gets relatively warm. So that's the first thing I can actually do. The next thing I can do with the channels report is I can actually go in and I can start to colorize it again. And I can use that same sort of thought process that we used if you've watched the previous tutorials with the split times report, we can go in and actually colorize the data to be able to see what's happening. And we can see that represented in a couple of different ways. I could add in some variance information here in terms of what's happening. And I can see how those are particularly running. And so I can get a nicer view of all the information that's showing up on this particular chart as well. And so there's a lot of things that I can actually do. Then what I can do, and sorry, I didn't demonstrate that. I'll do it a better job. This is for the whole session. This is for the whole lap within the whole session. But if I click here, I can break this down into each of those particular areas. And if you want to be able to understand, I've broken the uh, track map down into segments. And by breaking it down into segments, I can actually see how the car was performing through each of those particular areas. So, for example, if we happen to have um, a corner here, I can see if something's happening associated with the performance of the car in different areas of the corner and just have a nice visual representation of what's happening. So a lot of options with the channels report. Now, one of the things that you know you may be saying is, well, that's a nice view, but um, you know, is there other stuff we can do? And this is where it gets interesting. And we will get into customization and personalization later. But what you can do with a channels report, you can do with any of your particular tabs in the Race Studio 3 analysis software is you can add things together. So for example, I can go up to here and I can say I've actually loaded a profile which I built. This is one that I use regularly. I can scroll down and I can do, this is an RF07, so this is a 2007 Van Diemen RF07. Um, and I can click on vehicle health. And this is a profile that I've created to be, allow me to be able to view that information that I had, but I've added in additional components as well to be able to view more information. And this is how you can start customizing that view. And we'll talk about this in more detail as we go forward, looking at sort of different aspects um, of the chart. And so if I hit the space bar, I've got it so I can just see this particular chart set up. Uh, remember in Race Studio 2 analysis, if you hit the space bar, all you're gonna be able to move is move the channels list, but I can move all sorts of additional stuff if I just want a simple clean view. Then for example, if I wanted to be able to see, um, let's say uh, best five laps, notice these two charts down here. Now I've added in not only an understanding of the oil pressure that I have, but I can see the oil pressure down here based upon the lateral acceleration. So for example, if I'm having a high G-force corner, is it sloshing the oil around and moving it away from the pickup point that addresses and challenges the oil pressure? Something I can look at here. So there's a lot of ways of being able to customize your view. And we're gonna move into that as we go through the tutorials. But the channels report is a very important part of the conversation to be able to make sure by having a view like this, you can actually see this information. But remember, we uh, started out today just by creating a simple one and just to demonstrate, 
This was the simple one that we created earlier to be able to show just, you know, how to set it up. And the reason I toggled between the two is I want you to be able to always remember, always save that user profile so that you can customize your view and keep it uh, uh, how you want to be able to view it. With that, I'll end this tutorial. I'll say thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to be able to see more of these, subscribe because we're going to be putting out videos like this all year. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching.